Oh friends, I have such a great lesson for you in this tutorial on the secret stacks brush here in Snapseed from Google. This lesson is the gateway to all sorts of advanced editing techniques using this amazing app. Let's get right into it using this photo that I shot with my smartphone one beautiful evening outside of Zion National Park. I'm going to tap on the Tune Image Tools menu to get things going, and then I'm going to tap on the Adjust icon down here on the toolbar. For those who have been watching these tutorials, you know by now that I love the ambience control for landscape and travel photos like this one. When I swipe one finger to the right, Snapseed adds saturation to all of the colors in this image, and it adds light into the darker regions while simultaneously darkening down the brighter areas a little bit. In a photo like this one, the addition of saturation and the changes that Snapseed is making to the lighting here look fantastic. I'm pleased with the way that this image looks now, so I'm going to tap on the check mark down here in the right hand corner of the toolbar to commit this change and return to the app's home screen. As you know, holding one finger against the screen at this point will give me that before and after view again. As much as I like the way that this photo looks right now, I feel like the sky now is a little overdone. I love the added light and color in the foreground, but the sky, I fear, is now out competing the desert at the bottom of this image for my attention. So I'm gonna tap on the little button in the middle here. This button in the middle is called the edit stack, and it used to just show us our edit history, but additional features have been added into the menu that appears here in more recent versions of this incredible program. Next, I'm going to tap on the View Edits option. At this point, the screen will change, and now Snapseed will show all of the edit layers that I've added onto this image. In this case, there is just one layer, that Tune Image block down there on the right. Now, I covered this Edit Stack feature way back in my tutorial on the text tool, but just for a quick review, tapping on the word Original temporarily disables all of your edit layers and brings you back to your original capture. A tap on the Tune Image Edit layer will reactivate it and thus make that ambience change that I created a second ago visible again. On the left side of this edit layer is a tiny little triangle. When I tap on this minuscule button, then another menu will appear with three small icons. Tapping on the trash can symbol on the far left would delete this edit layer. Tapping on the little sliders icon on the far right side in here would reopen the Tune Image Tools menu and give me the chance to adjust all of those controls that we had a minute ago over again. It's the icon in the middle, the one with the little brush symbol, that holds the real magic here. When I tap on this one, Snapseed's secret stacks brush feature will open. At first, it will appear as if all that ambience that we added has been removed. Don't panic. The change that we made a second ago has not been lost or deleted. Once you enter this edit mask mode, Snapseed is asking you where it should make the changes that this layer provides visible. As soon as I tap on the invert button, all that ambience, all that punch comes back. If I tap on the mask button over there on the right side of the toolbar, then a red overlay, the rubolith, will appear over top of the whole image. For those who watched the previous tutorial on the plain old brush tool, or for those of you with an Adobe Photoshop background, this red overlay might already make some sense. What Snapseed is doing here is it's trying to show me the area that this edit layer will change with this red mask. The areas underneath the red, in this case, the entire image, are the parts of the photo that this layer currently changes, which are why we see the additional ambience working everywhere. The magic here is that to limit where this layer works, all I need to do is erase away that red overlay from the parts of the image that I don't want this layer to change. Before I start painting though, I need to pick the right strength for my brush. Since I want the sky to remain unchanged, I'm going to tap on the decrease arrow a few times until my brush strength says zero. Zero here, meaning do not allow any percentage of the change 
in this case, that's the addition of all that ambience, to happen to any of the areas that we paint over with the zero strength brush. That circle that appears when I press two fingers against the screen represents the size of my paint brush tip. Since I don't want this demo to take all day, and since I can do a much better job if I use a bigger brush, I'm gonna use the two finger pinch in move now to make my image smaller. Remember that in Snapseed, as the image gets smaller, the brush tip gets bigger and vice versa. I can paint across the top of my image at this point with a few swipes, and as you can see, the red rubolith disappears. Now, remember that the area under the red overlay here is the area that this layer will change. So, when I tap on the mask button again, and then I press the before and after, check it out. Now, instead of adding ambience everywhere, I'm restricting this change to the foreground only. Sure, there is a little spillover into the clouds right along the horizon line, but that doesn't bother me. The important part is that this change is having no effect on the clouds up there at the top of the sky. This is awesome. See, the edit mask feature allows us to use almost any tool or filter in Snapseed exactly where we want it without changing the rest of the image. I'm gonna tap on the check mark to commit this change and return to the view edit screen. Now, I'm gonna tap on the little left facing arrow up there in the top corner to return to our home screen. Let's go a little further. The foreground looks perfect to me, but now I feel like the sky needs a little more drama. So let's go back to the tools and filters and then back to the tune image tools again. This time, I'm gonna set the brightness down to about negative 25. I'll bump the saturation up to about plus 30. Then I'm gonna slide down to the warmth control and add a bit of yellow light to the sky. That looks good, so now I'll commit this change. Of course, right now, this new edit layer is adjusting the whole image, but I only want it to affect the sky. So, back to the Stacks menu, again, back to the View Edits choice, and now I need to tap on the little carrot on the topmost layer, since that is the one that I just created. One more tap on the brush icon, and now I can tell Snapseed that I only want this chain to happen up there in the sky. I'll start by setting the brush strength to 100 this time. Last time, I used the invert command so that I was starting with an all red mask. This time, instead of starting with a mask that would change everything everywhere, I'm going to start with a mask where nothing is changing, and then I will paint over the areas where I want the additional yellow light to appear myself. The next step is to zoom out again using the two finger pinch move. A little painting with the 100 strength brush now. Let me zoom back in. And let's see the before and after. Much better. Now, there is more color and drama in the sky, and it doesn't outcompete the foreground. If I tap on the mask button, do you see how the sky on this edit layer is the part that's covered in red? If I've gone too far, I could set the brush down to say zero and erase away the areas that I've spilled on. Again, I have to stress that the red rubolith represents the region that this layer will change. I'm happy now, so I'll commit my work, and then I'll tap here to return to the home screen. From this to this, using just two edit layers and a little quick painting with the secret stacks brush feature. I'm gonna save my work now, although there's lots more that I could do with this image. The point to this tutorial is to get you started playing with the Stacks brush feature. And play, you must, because these masking skills 
are the basis for almost all of the advanced tricks that I will show you in our next tutorials. See you there.